Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Justin Gazza, uh, and this is Living and Moving to Seattle, Washington. In this video, we're gonna compare Redmond and Kirkland. If you're considering making a move out to the Seattle, greater Seattle metro area, and you are considering these two suburbs, this is the video for you. We're gonna break down a comparison to kind of give you the nitty gritty details on what it's like to live in Kirkland versus what it's like to live in Redmond. Try to make it really convenient and easy for you to figure out what area you'd like to live in. If you live in the area already, I always love it when you drop me a comment and let me know if I missed anything. If you're looking to relocate, and those are the neighborhoods you're considering, this is the video for you. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button so that you're notified uh, of all the new videos that are coming up. So let's get into it right away. So here's the thing about Redmond and Kirkland. They're northeast of Seattle and they're on the other side of Lake Washington, which means hopefully we can bring up a map. But when you look at a map and you're looking at the Seattle area, you'll notice that we're surrounded by water. It's what they call, I'm gonna pronounce this correct, incorrectly, but it's called an isthmus. And so that means we've got, you know, the Puget Sound on one side, and then a big lake on the other side, and Redmond and Kirkland are different cities across Lake Washington. With the easiest access to get over there is the toll bridge, the 520 bridge, which is a floating highway, a uh, floating bridge that floats right on top of the water. So here's the thing. When you look at Redmond and Kirkland, they are super close together. They're just north of Bellevue. And a lot of people always consider these areas the same, but they are two different cities and they are distinct in the way, uh, in how they are uh, kind of set up. And so I wanna go into a little bit about what it's like to live in Kirkland and then we'll jump into what it's like to live in Redmond. And I promise you wanna to stay to the end because I'm gonna tell you a little secret about Redmond and then uh, that I, I think you'll find interesting or maybe at least a little bit funny. So let's talk about Kirkland. So Kirkland is right on Lake Washington. It covers a, a lot of waterfront and then it has a lot of residential housing that moves east off the water. Now because of that waterfront, they've got beautiful parks. Uh, they've got a couple of sandy beaches. They've got some great condo buildings right on the water that are uh, surprisingly affordable to live in and then a little bit further uh, off the water you start to get into residential housing and so uh, the Seattle area Washington State in general we see a lot of zoning for single-family detached housing Kirkland is no different they've got beautiful homes right there with a lot of views if you're in the market neighborhood which is west of market uh, it kind of slopes down a lot of those houses have great fantastic amazing views of the water and look westward uh, which is uh, it captures the sunset which is always desirable right so that market neighborhood fantastic beautiful beautiful homes there and uh, you know kirkland being a suburb of seattle really started to see a boom throughout the 40s, 50s, and 60s. But a lot of those older homes uh, have been torn down and these mega, mega beautiful, fantastic homes have been built in their place. So it's not uncommon to see houses ranging from a million to four million in the area. It really just depends on what you're looking for. And like I mentioned before, the downtown waterfront where that business district is has more condos, which may be more suited to your taste uh, or your budget. Uh, with places in the five, seven hundreds, uh, and sometimes you can find studios a little bit lower priced. Obviously, you know, the things that may change as we're filming this video don't, you know, years go by, the video lives forever, prices might change. So, in Kirkland, I really want to focus on the downtown corridor and what that really looks like insofar as a livability. To me, it always had this kind of feel that's a little bit more La Jolla, a little bit more Southern California, really relaxed in a beach town kind of feel because of those beaches, because of those restaurants that cater uh, to that design and appeal, much different than what you would expect from uh, generally the Pacific Northwest with a lot of trees and, and this sort of thing. Downtown Kirkland really has a different kind of design and appeal, especially on a sunny day. You cruise through, there's lots of great sidewalks. It's one of the areas that has a, a, a focus on 
on making things easy on, on pedestrians. Our city council works to do that in the way that they design the city. It's very pedestrian and bike friendly. You have a lot of great restaurants, bars, and shops in that downtown corridor along, along the water there. And then as you get away further north into Juanita or into um, west of Market neighborhood or uh, North Kirk or Norkirk, uh, North Kirkland, that neighborhood subsection, or even Rose Hill, you're starting to see larger lots and bigger homes uh, and, and that sort of thing. It is very much a suburb. It's, you know, it has that suburban design and appeal, but it really feels like you're in town, closer in, especially closer to the water where you can walk around great sidewalks and parks. Uh, it really has a tremendous amount of parks and uh, really, really a beautiful, beautiful area in that regard. Now, some of the drawbacks of living in Kirkland is that, yeah, that beautiful downtown area, you want to go, you want to get there, you want to have a great time, hang out on the beach, uh, maybe play some volleyball or go to the uh, uh, flat stick pub or whatever that's down there and uh, go out to dinner at Anthony's. Parking is a little difficult, right? It's such a beautiful area, it draws in so many people that uh, you can find yourself parking pretty far away from those beach parks up the hill and, and walking down. There's only a couple of you know public parking areas, pay for parking areas and street parking, and it does fill up fairly quickly. So you do want to get there kind of early if you're planning on spending the day at the beach. Uh, even a little bit easier parking further north in, in Juanita, um, which, uh, you know, 10 minutes north, another great beach park, a little bit easier to park up there. Uh, but down, the downtown core, it does become a little bit difficult. So as you're in Kirkland, it's really only 10 to 15 minutes uh, east to get you over into Redmond. Now, the thing about Redmond is, is it's much more rural, it has almost the same population as Kirkland. Uh, it's just north of Bellevue, just uh, east of Kirkland, but it has a very, very different appeal. It's much, much slower, uh, and there is a lot less you know, of a, of a downtown. There's Redmond Town Center. Um, Redmond Town Center, as you drive Redmond Way, uh, Redmond Town Center, there's you know some shops and stuff, but it is very uh, much less a downtown core and unfortunately much more strip molly. It doesn't have that same design as appeal, that thoughtfulness of, uh, of a downtown core walkable uh, that Kirkland does, certainly not downtown Bellevue or Seattle, right? The thing about Redmond that's great is you know they've got the velodrome if you're into bicycle racing they're known as the bicycle capital i think bicycle capital of the world is what their claim uh, with tons of bike trails tons and tons of walking trails uh, and hiking trails big lots trees big houses uh, but it does get very rural very fast as you get out into ames lake or some of the other areas that are further out further east uh, still considered redmond those neighborhoods it does become a lot more uh, there's some great cul-de-sac neighborhoods, but there's also some great areas that are, uh, they're pretty rural, right? So the general feel, if you're looking at Redmond, is gonna be a lot more, um, I would say, suburban, almost rural, where Kirkland is suburban. Like, I don't know if that makes sense how I, how I say that, but uh, it's definitely on the border of being rural in Redmond. Uh, obviously, they have you know some condos and they have some apartment buildings going up. They do have a lot of development in the area. It has changed a, drastically over the last 10 years. But in general, it still kind of has that much, much slower, small, small town kind of feel. Whereas Kirkland is a city, has a great downtown, feels, you know, feels like there's activity and movement. Certainly does not, neither one of them has the nightlife. Um, that Bellevue does or that Seattle does, uh, that's for sure. And the great thing about Kirkland and Redmond, why people are so drawn to Kirkland and Redmond is that the price and affordability for what you get being just north of Bellevue, uh, you know, Bellevue being the most expensive, Kirkland next, then Redmond, uh, and you're really within you know, 20, 30 minutes of any of that stuff 
with, uh, with needing, you know, if you need to go anywhere. So a lot of people will move out to those areas. If you're considering it, I've got to imagine it's because of Microsoft, Nintendo, SpaceX, the healthcare that, that you know, it's heavy into healthcare out there, lots of tech and healthcare jobs in the area. And sometimes it just makes sense depending on the lifestyle you want to live. If you're looking for a big home uh, to grow into, you know, you may be considering uh, Rose Hill and Kirkland or somewhere out in Redmond uh, to get that space that you're looking for. Uh, you know, downtown Kirkland is a little bit more young and fun, but it's not certainly not downtown Bellevue, certainly not Seattle. So let's get into just a handful of nitty gritty about Kirkland uh, insofar as commute times and whatnot. Like I said, if you're living in that area, chances are you're working in that area, right? Most people move out there, like I said, because of Microsoft, Nintendo, some of these big tech firms or healthcare, you can easily live in Redmond and commute into Kirkland or maybe uh, Totem Lake is, is technically where, where the office is, but you're looking at 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, easy stuff, right? Almost take you more time to get into your car than it would to drive uh, to the location that you're, that you're headed towards and then um, you know, park your car and, and, and get out and get, get into work. That could take longer than the actual drive time. Bellevue being 20 minutes, 30 minutes away, depending on where you are, is a pretty easy commute. But again, because of the proximity, you're really looking at almost more time to get in your car than it, and, and park and get out to your car than the total amount of time behind the wheel. Some of the big drawbacks though, especially with Redmond, is you know Redmond Way and 520, they are just not big enough to handle the traffic. And so you can commute into downtown Seattle with no traffic from Redmond in about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, if with traffic, you could be 45 minutes to an hour. But as soon as there's traffic, those roads are awful, right? So hopefully you're in the position where maybe you have a hybrid model, you don't have to go in all the time or you work closer. From Kirkland, it's only 11 miles into Seattle. And so that could be a 15, 20 minute commute with no traffic, uh, but with traffic, because we're all headed towards that 520 bridge, with traffic, easily 30 to 45 minutes. So again, Kirkland, hopefully you're working in that area, uh, Kirkland, Redmond, Bellevue area, uh, and you can cut down on those commute times. Another thing that's always, always so obnoxious about the living in the Seattle metro area is, is that the highway systems do work pretty well when there's no when there's no traffic, uh, but you can also spend a lot of times in town side streets making commutes, and you get be stuck behind a school bus or something like that. It can take you almost as long uh, to go 11 miles as it does to go 22 miles or 30 miles. So something to consider. Okay, so. Kind of seeing those differences and, and understanding, you know, the, the time to commute and, and where they're located and why there's so much draw with all the tech and the uh, healthcare businesses and the lifestyle, a little bit more young and fun things to do in Kirkland, uh, a little more room to grow out in Redmond and price points are both less than what it would cost to live in Bellevue proper, whether that's bridal trails, you know, and a tie. Uh, 98004 Bellevue or uh, you know you can head further south into you know or southeast into Crossroads or Lake Mont and Bellevue and maybe see some of the same price points as you would in Redmond or Kirkland um, getting further away from the core of those cities prices always seem to drop a little bit unless of course there's a view involved right and, and that's what's one of the big draws of coming out to the Pacific Northwest is views, 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 and water, water, water. We got access to all that. So one of the things that, that uh, we joke about with Redmond is that pretty much everything is closed around nine o'clock. There isn't a lot of nightlife there. People, um, I don't know if it's affectionately referred to it or condescendingly refer to it as Deadmond. It is just dead. There's nothing going on out there. So when I tell you that it's a little more young and fun, in Kirkland, a little bit more things to do, you know, uh, there is quite a bit more, you know, downtown core and that sort of stuff to do. And, and Redmond really is, um, you're gonna have your essentials, your Fred Meyer, your Home Depot, Safeway, uh, I think uh, uh, Whole Foods, you know, through that Redmond way or that, uh, uh, that, that, that corridor there by Redmond Town Center. 
So that's, I think, the big joke. I think that a lot of people love Redmond so much because of the lifestyle, and those people are looking for that slower pace, more uh, borderline rural lifestyle, big houses, big lots, lots of trees. Uh, but you gotta know if you're going out there. I mean, it's Deadmond. It's there's not a lot to do. Plenty of trails, plenty of places to ride your bike. But if you're looking for bars, restaurants, nightlife, and walkability, Redmond probably isn't the place that you're looking for. Uh, even in those condos, you 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 know those condo buildings that they have, or those apartment buildings that they have. You know th those amenities are really just just enough to satisfy being out there but there isn't a lot of variety if you're looking to be you know walkable and in that core with those water views of that waterfront you know redmond does have a little bit of waterfront closer to marymore park and on on uh, um, lake washington but it doesn't have the same kind of uh, waterfront access that kirkland does and so you're going to see a lot more beaches and and be able to look out even you know across the water towards Seattle and, and see a lot more views even man even some of the lots in Kirkland are on the water with that southwest facing and you can see Mount Rainier too and that is that is that is it like to sign me up for that that's really the best of the best there so if you're looking for more you know you want that small town design and appeal, but you want to have a little more options, definitely Kirkland uh, versus Redmond. If you're looking for you know, slower pace with just enough amenities, Redmond will be fine for you. You know, we're helping people make this move all the time. Reach out to me, shoot me a text, give me a call. We want to make it really easy and convenient for you. Give you all the information and details that you're looking for. Uh, you know, we've got your back when you're making this move. We help people relocate uh, all the time and even help folks here that already live here that are making that transition uh, from one city or neighborhood to the next. You can find all of my contact info below. Like I said, I'm a real estate broker here in the Seattle metro area and would love to, love to connect with you. So appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video here if I miss something if you live in the area like I said in the beginning I'd really love to hear kind of what your comparisons are anything that I missed that that is worth noting so that we can give people all the details and information we're looking for really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video talk to you